Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In many ways, AMD's strategy for graphics is kind of following a similar path to what we've seen with their CPUs. Do you remember when Zen first launched and it was basically a ground up design? Zen was a story which continued to build upon itself. The first iteration, for example, for the desktop would go up to eight cores and it marked a pretty impressive feat for AMD. It was very competitive in uh, multi-threading applications particularly, but wasn't quite as good in gaming. And then of course we had a small refresh with Zen Plus, which we'll skip over here. And then Zen 2 perhaps marked one of the more important releases for AMD ever because it bought in chiplets. And Zen 2 also increased gaming performance quite substantially as well. And obviously this is a tale which will continue to be told. But much the same thing could also be said for AMD's graphics. We saw Vega be relatively successful for AMD, but then AMD have built upon this with the RDNA architectures. And these architectures are designed squarely for gaming performance. They are not as efficient for compute purposes, but AMD of course have cDNA for that, for the data center. When I first leaked about this in March of 2019, I was told that the two architectures would be for relatively different purposes. I was told though that RDNA, or at the time we just knew it as Nave, was designed to fix the weaknesses in GCN and would continue to add features such as hardware-based ray tracing. And well, we've kind of seen that play out, haven't we? The RX 5000 series was pretty successful for the company and was a lot more energy efficient compared to, let's say, Vega. But now Nave 2X is out and I honestly think that the architecture is perhaps one of the best gaming architectures that AMD have released, well, possibly ever actually, even if you count that ATI days, as it's extremely competitive in traditional rasterization performance and isn't too bad in ray tracing performance. And I suspect that as developers get more acclimated and just, well, you know, better accustomed to even the consoles and how they deal with things, AMD's ray tracing performance is probably only going to get better. RDNA 2 also brought in other features other than hardware-based ray tracing, such as mesh shaders and variable rate shading. And these are going to be very important, not necessarily now, but certainly in a few years' time. Anyway, yeah, I had quite a lot of rambling. So what actually are we gonna be doing in this video? Oh, I'm glad you asked, person. The answer is that we are going to be taking a look at both RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 using the RX 5700 XT and pitting it against the 6700 XT. And the purpose of this is just to see how well they are performing in terms of performance per watt, as well as just IPC gains and just kind of understanding what AMD are trying to do with these architectures. We've been sent the reference design 5700 XT and 6700 XT from AMD themselves. And there'll be some other videos coming on the channel not too long from now, which are going to explore other aspects of these GPUs. But while we will be sending these cards back to AMD, I did want to disclose that they are review samples, just so that everyone understands what we're coming from. So before we get to the results, let's just quickly go over the test setup, the testing methodology, and the specifications of the cards. The tests will be conducted on a system which features a Ryzen 9 5950X, 32 gigabytes of RAM running at 4000 megahertz, and all of the games are plonked on NVMe SSDs with the game drive being a PCIe Gen 4 drive and the uh, motherboard itself is an MSI provided B550. We're going to be using the reference design of the 5700 XT as well as the 6700 XT. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the specs but we'll quickly go over them. The 5700X features 40 compute units with a base frequency of 1605 megahertz, although it does boost up to 1905. We'll get more into that in a moment. The game frequency though is 1755. And obviously this card is outfitted with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. So we've got 448 uh, gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. As for the 6700 XT, it features 40 compute units with a base frequency of 2321, although boosts up to 2581 with a game frequency of 2424, I like that. Of course, this also features ray tracing acceleration. A major difference of the uh, RDNA 2 architecture is the Infinity Cache. 
So the 6700 XT here features 96 megabytes of infinity cache, whereas the 6800 and above feature 128 megabytes. The purpose of infinity cache is basically so that the GPU itself can make do with less memory bandwidth on the uh, main system RAM. So that way it can be almost like it's got a considerably wider bus, for example, 384 bit, and uh, yeah, it is a lot more energy efficient too, because obviously the GDDR6 memory modules still do require power. And it also means that you can have a less complicated board design or not require such fast RAM. And uh, naturally this has been a major benefit of the RDNA2 architecture for AMD. We've gone in depth many times on the channel of how RDNA 2 improves over RDNA 1, but I'm gonna to touch on a few of the finer points here briefly. The first is higher clock frequency. So in the case of the 40 compute units of the 6700 XT and 5700 XT, this means that we're looking at 13.21 teflops versus about 9.75 teflops, which is obviously a tangible difference, but it goes far deeper than just more T-flops. This also means that fill rates increase as well, but furthermore, if you're running the GPU faster, the caches themselves also benefit. Prior to the launch of Nave 2X, I'd been hearing that AMD's engineering teams who had been responsible for the power optimization for Zen 2 actually helped out the GPU teams at AMD. And this is actually, well, confirmed here in this slide. This means that the GPU is much more power efficient, obviously a key component in maintaining these higher frequencies. And there are also a whole host of architecture improvements to increase the IPC of the GPU as well. Oh, also a small note about our testing. I've disabled variable rate shading from titles which benefit from it, for example, Gears 5, just to give us a apples to apples comparison. Outside of that, the 6700 XT also features more memory. Um, so we've got 12 gigabytes of RAM and um, it's got 192-bit interface with 384 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. So technically speaking, absolute terms, although it does have um, a wider memory bus and more RAM, it does actually have, technically speaking, less memory bandwidth, but this deficit is more than made up for by the Infinity Cache, as we just discussed a moment ago. So we're gonna be testing at 1080p, 1440p, and finally 4K. And we will be um, also choosing two different clock frequencies for both GPUs. We'll be running them at stock, so they boost up to their natural clock frequencies. Again, these are reference designs, so your mileage will vary definitely in those tests if you have like a, a power color, like super duper high-end GPU, for example. And we will also be um, locking the clock frequency to about 1800 megahertz. Now I say about 1800 megahertz simply because of the nature of a GPU, it can go up and down slightly, but I did manage to get both cards pretty stable at around 1800 megahertz. A quick note though about RDNA 2, this also does affect the uh, frequency of course of the infinity cache, but yeah, I um, I figure that this is a good opportunity for both GPUs. I could kind of get the uh, 5700 XT that I had to around two gigahertz, but it wasn't 100% stable in all of our tests. So I figured 1800 megahertz was a nice frequency for both GPUs. So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? Well, a number of them. If we look at the power consumption, I think it's fair to say that RDNA 2 is a massive improvement over its predecessor. And naturally, this is very important because RDNA 2 will also find its way 
into um, laptops, of course. We're starting to see quite a, a bit of information about that already. And of course, it also forms the basis of the uh, next generation or current generation consoles. And again, power consumption uh, uh, targets are very important for those. But in terms of IPC gains, RDNA 2, well, it is definitely an improvement over its predecessor. It doesn't double performance at the same clock frequency or anything like that. However, there is definitely a tangible gain. Uh, for example, what we see with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, as well as Borderlands. Naturally, these results aren't so big when we go to 4K and the GPU is just absolutely flat out. But at 1440p, you can definitely see performance results. And if we're running the GPU at its natural frequency, well, there is just no comparison, of course. The GPU runs much faster for the 6700 XT versus the 5700 XT. And if we do some tweaking, I've only done a little bit on the 6700 XT as I haven't really needed to do it yet for this video. But, you know, I've been hitting way over 2600, 2700 megahertz without too much effort at all. Well, guys, I think that's just about it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Do the YouTube stuff. Click the thumbs up button because it's YouTube land. And uh, with that said, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.